This is Up Close, SABC News weekday program that profiles men and women making waves in the industries and gives newsmakers a platform where they can share their stories and vision as we hope to inspire you, our viewer. I'm Safa Mutagua. Stay tuned for the next half hour as we get up close to Intra-Africa trading expert, Dr. Natalie Chindi. Natalie Chinje is the founder and director of Upbeat Marketing, a marketing consultancy which, amongst other things, promotes intra-Africa trading. It has been quite a year for this Cameroon-born national. Not only has she just completed her PhD in business management with Vitz Business School, she has just been appointed the region's new executive director of We Connect International, an organization promoting women entrepreneurship globally. She has also been nominated for the World Economic Forum Forum Young Leader. Wow, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no longer Natalie, it's now Dr. Chinje. How are you, Natalie? <laughs> I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're not very new to SABC. <laughs> there was a time that we used to do interviews with you, you used to give us uh, some uh, advice about inter African trading and things like that. But a lot has changed since then. A lot has changed. Positively, yes. Yeah, I think the first question that um, I would ask when I think about you and I read your CV is how does a, a young girl from Cameroon, Central Africa, French-speaking mm -hmm. country, leave her home and make it in the world the way that you have? So let's start by tell us how was growing up in Cameroon? Cameroon is such a beautiful country. Uh -huh. uh, I was born and bred in Cameroon. Uh -huh. It's a place I love. Okay. I still have my parents there. Were you, were you in the, uh, did you grow up in the capital? I grew up in the economic capital okay. called uh, Douala. Okay. Yes, I was born in Douala. Mm -hmm. So I had a fantastic time in Cameroon with my sister, my close family, and okay. extended family. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. it was great. And what that taught me as I was growing up in Cameroon, uh, it taught me the values of empathy, okay. knowledge, sharing, because it was all about extended family, brothers. So you grew over. up in a big family yes. and family used to get around a lot. Absolutely. And okay. we were always having fun. It was about having fun. But most importantly, I mm -hmm. still remember what mm. our parents used to tell us. Okay. You can have fun, mm -hmm. but study hard and okay. be smart. And then uh, where did you go to school? What was your school, the school years, or should I say, like? Uh, in Cameroon, I went uh -huh. to a school called uh, Lycée de Jeunes Filles. Okay. It's like a high school for young girls. Okay, so yeah. you went to a uh, unisex school? Uh, it actually wasn't unisex. Oh, see, okay. uh, at some point, obviously, it was mixed. Oh, okay. We had a male and female at the school. So uh -huh. it, was, it was great to have that mixture of, of gender. Okay. Yes. Was it a boarding school? No, it wasn't a boarding school, okay. no. Okay, what kind of school was it though? Was it um, a, uh, like a religious school? What are some of the things that you take from those years? I mean, about the school, the school mm -hmm. was is still situated uh, in, in the city center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in an area called uh, uh, New Bell uh, in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. It's not like in a remote area. And we've had like celebrities, Cameroonian celebrities attending the school. Okay. Yes, we actually had our late first lady, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Jeanne Renbia, going to the Lycée de Jeunes Filles uh, in Douala, where uh, I studied. Mm -hmm. So it was a great school. It so was okay. a school where I was able to start for forging a strong connection with other women mm -hmm, who have mm -hmm. become quite powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, in our so it was quite an affluent kind of school? Uh, I wouldn't really say affluent kind mm -hmm. of school. I see where you're going with the discussion. <laughs> I would say more of a middle class. It was a public okay. school. It wasn't a private school. Mm -hmm. It was a public school. Mm -hmm. And what were your parents doing when you were growing up? What was their occupation? My dad was a banker. Okay. And believe it or not, he's been running his business now for the past like 20 to 25 years. Aha, uh -huh. so that's where it started. <laughs> it was daddy's influence. Always daddy, <laughs> daddy's girl. Okay, and your mother? 
My mother has never worked. My mother's okay. uh, main focus was on our education and yeah. ensuring that the foundation that needed to be obviously laid is well laid down. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of community that you are basically brought up in. Mm -hmm. And let's fast forward to how you actually end up in South Africa. <laughs> um, because you come from that background where the, the women take care of their children and that was basically the path that was there for you. Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. You, you've got to remember that I've come from a family that really encouraged women mm -hmm. to educate themselves. Okay. So it, it was quite obviously obvious that at some point, as a female, as an educated female, that you obviously forge your own view mm -hmm. of the environment in which you are operating and where you want to be. Okay. So it wasn't always about saying that because you've grown up in this environment, that seemed to be quite um, more, I would say, square. Okay. There are no opportunities for you. No, yes. you have to shape up your own features. We're okay. going to be giving you, obviously, um, the tools for you to get there, for you to be successful. Mm -hmm. But it was never about just be beautiful and stay at home. <laughs> but never you, you got that. married quite early on. Yes, I did. Okay, and tell us for about me, that. it's all about love. You know, <laughs> follow your heart. <laughs> yeah, I did. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah. Uh, I was 21, 22 mm -hmm. when I got married to my husband, mm -hmm. uh, Innocent Chinje. Mm -hmm who is a very successful architect mm -hmm. uh, living with me here. So we've been together for 20 years now. We have two beautiful girls, Casey and Jamie. Okay. Yeah. So at 21, what were you doing when you met your husband? Having fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah. Having fun, uh, meeting people. Okay. I was at a university in Douala. I studied, uh, I did some law, believe it or not. Okay. At a university. So uh, at the time you're yes. studying law, you're in university, you're mm. 21, uh, you never even thought about moving to South Africa. That's that's the phase that you, you were at. You've got to understand that in those days, actually, yeah. we were not allowed yeah. to live in South Africa. That okay. was not an option for us. As a French-speaking Cameroonian, the obvious option would have been to go and live in France or to move to, to Canada mm -hmm. or even Germany because mm -hmm. it used to be like a German colony. Okay. Yes, yeah. But so obviously over time, mm -hmm. things change. Yeah. So how We've did it come about, the move to South Africa? There were a lot of development hap happening globally. We've mm -hmm. also seen some positive changes that were mm -hmm. happening uh, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. My husband had some contact then and he was invited to, to He move was already over here. working as an architect? Uh, yes, yes. He was okay. already practicing as an architect in Cameroon. So he gets invited <laughs> to move to South Africa, an English country, and you I decide, I love my husband, I'm going to take a law. Be beyond just the love, you see, that's yeah. who I am. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Yeah, I gave you a bit of a picture of my background. It's all about having fun. Mm -hmm. It's about being passionate about what you do. And the passion actually needs to be driven by a set of things. You see, and I was driven by a set of things that led me to come over here. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the person who's talking to you, I'm mm -hmm. talking about me, it's about the passion. Mm -hmm. It's about also understanding what you want to achieve. The risks obviously could have been quite high because I was moving into a country that had just barely come out of the apartheid system. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's hold it there. I want to pick it up right yes. there about uh, when you got to South Africa and what that experience was like. After the break, we continue to get up close with Natalie Ichinje. Do you have any suggestions or comments for us? My Twitter handle is at Tepi Mutsugua. Stay with us. <laughs> Did you at any point imagine that you would find yourself in that uh, position? We all hustle. You hustle for a good story. I hustle to make money. Mm. Every one of us is a hustler. Glenn Agliotti, yes. did you kill Brett Kebble? No, not at all. Why were you accused of killing Brett Kebble? Because it suited the NPA at the time and the Scorpions. That's Question Time, Channel 404. the news on SABC. We bring you news in your own language. News that affect you.
Sports. We have Catherine Drew, SABC News at the High Court in London. Sherwin Bryce's SABC News News. Sarah Kimani, SABC News, Nairobi. We touch and change people's lives. SABC News, Africa's news leader. The gold sector is likely to come to a standstill next week. Yesterday, another trade union, the Aviation Union of Southern Africa, accepted and signed SAA's 6.5% wage offer. The United Nations top tourism body predicts that tourists visiting Africa will triple by 2030. And Japan's biggest brewers are revamping their lineups to capture the younger generation who prefer drinks sweeter than the average pint. Ice cream flavored beer, yuck. That's business news, weekdays at 8 p.m. on SABC News, Channel 404. Thank you for staying with us as we continue to get up close with Dr. Natalie Chinje. Natalie, you come to South Africa, you're from um, a French-speaking country, you've had your independence for a long time, uh, your husband gets offered an opportunity here, you get here and what do you find? I found a beautiful country mm -hmm. and uh, I've come to realize that, you know, unfortunately the media <laughs> uh -huh. had been painting just one side okay. of the country, not the other side. The other side being the beautiful side okay. of this country, yes. So, so the impression that you had before was what? What I could see, what I could yeah, read. Yeah, what was the media saying? Yeah. The media obviously was talking extensively about segregation. It was a reality mm -hmm. that we knew uh, globally, mm -hmm. but also that it's a high-risk country. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of crime? In terms of crime, in terms of... Uh, stability because obviously around 1994 1996 we're not too sure as to what exactly was going to happen mm -hmm. so there was that how did your mm. family react when you said you're going to follow your husband <laughs> obviously there were mixed feelings in the family yes. yeah yeah but my family has always been extremely supportive yeah. supportive of me supportive of what i like supportive of the goal that i wanted to achieve as a person yeah so they were supportive and they're still quite supportive of me Okay, so the young student who wanted to do <laughs> law now is uprooted from a home. She comes here and I believe you were pregnant and you started being, you know, the, the woman of the house. Beyond just being the woman of the house, yes, I was pregnant. It's a pregnancy that I wanted. Yes. And I, I was quite pleased to be pregnant and to yes. be in a country where I also had the opportunity to... Um, embrace some of the positive development that are still happening uh, within South Africa. So like okay. I said, it wasn't just about the bad. Mm -hmm. There was a positive angle to that, such as infrastructure development, the, the, the opportunity to start mixing with people from different classes, social classes, different backgrounds. But Natalie, I mean, uh, surely you were bored. I mean, I'm, no, I'm, I'm thinking about you now, the woman who's sitting here, who's, you know, you've traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. At that time, you've just, you know, you've, you've stopped your studies. You've come to South Africa to support your husband. You're now uh, like a, a housewife, you know, you're pregnant. <laughs> you must have been very bored. No, I couldn't have been bored. I couldn't because, like I said again, I'm the type of person who knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. I knew that obviously I had to allow myself to, to have my baby, mm -hmm. to take care of the baby. But again, as part of that process, what was quite critical for me was the ability to express myself in the local languages. Okay. Cameroon is a bilingual country. We mm -hmm. speak French and English, mm -hmm. but I'm from the English part of Cameroon. And even then, English was not properly taught at school. Mm. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to have fun again. I'm mm. going to be raising this baby at home. What a beauty to spend the next year or the next six months at home with my beautiful daughter. And I then mean, also learning parents the language. Nowadays, yeah. do not have that opportunity. Yes. I was offered that opportunity or yes. I created that opportunity for me. Yeah. And yeah. at the same time, what I did, uh, I hired a private English teacher okay. who came over to my place 
I think three to four times a week to teach me English for a period of five to six months. I'm actually going to give her name here because she, she's been also an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Vini Raja. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was with the University of Pretoria at some point and we are today good friends. Mm. She's the person who has seen me growing from the Cameroonian just entering the South African uh, environment, not being able to speak English. She has imparted those skills to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in a way that for me was quite acceptable because you know you have to think about the learning process. Mm -hmm. The learning process for me was made quite easy. I could have just said, oh no, it's a difficult country. I don't have friends. I just had a child, a lot of challenges. No, I can't cope. My yeah. mom is not here. It's my first baby. Yes. So what to do? No. Yeah. It was again about having fun. Mm. And my life has been all about that. About having, having fun. fun. Okay, so how is then going to Stellenbosch and doing an <laughs> MBA fun? <laughs> Help me understand that. How do you move from there to ending up in Stellenbosch? You have to understand that it's all about you. It's all about defining your vision and uh -huh. your goal. Mm -hmm. I, I am a mother, okay. yes. I am a daughter. I'm a wife. Yes. I am an educator today, I'm a consultant, I'm a leader, but most importantly, what I believe I am today, and hopefully tomorrow in the years to come, is to be the change agent. Mm -hmm. Someone who is going to effect positive changes in this specific area. The first area for me has been the area of education. But was that clear for you at that time? When did you know that's what you wanted to do? When did you know that's what you wanted to do with your life? I've always known that mm -hmm. education was critical. I've always known that education was quite important. And again, at home, where we used to play, when we used to have fun, our parents used to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. Education should be your first husband. Okay. Physical. And did your husband accept that? Now you go <laughs> did, how did he deal with you going to Stellenbosch? He has been supportive all mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. all the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure it's quite difficult. Moving forward to after you studied your MBA, um, you've been very successful with your uh, marketing c uh, company, encouraging inter-Africa uh, trade. You decide now that, no, you want to go and get your <laughs> PhD. <laughs> and you spend a year in New York away from your family. Mm -hmm. How did the family deal with that? It was part of the plan, it was part of the bigger plan, and it's not something that just happened overnight. Mm -hmm. It was well thought of, it was well planned, and when you go through that process, the mm -hmm. family is supportive because they've been a part of it. We planned, so how are we going to manage? Mom is not going to be here, she's going to Canada first. Uh, she may come back for about two or three weeks and then off to, to, to New York University. We have our routine at home. So what's going to happen? I've been extremely good at obviously um, connecting the dot, either internally or externally, making sure that I build a strong support structure at home first and also externally. And that has worked for me. Mm. in many, many ways. Mm. You know, your confidence is just, it, it <laughs> blows me away. I want to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue to get up close with Natalie Chinje. Do you have any suggestions or comments about the show? My Twitter handle is at Tepi Mutsuku. We'll stay with SABC News. <laughs> Afternoon, you're watching the news at one. In the headlines, thousands gathered to commemorate the first anniversary of the Marikana massacre. The ANC and the National Union of Mine Workers are boycotting the anniversary. Zuelin Zimavavi was a target of this conspiracy. There is no political conspiracy even on this matter. That's news at one. Weekdays at 1 p.m. on SABC News Channel 404.
Thank you for staying with us as we continue to get up close with Dr. Natalie Chinje. Natalie, as we're chatting, even in the break, your confidence is just, it, it blows me away. And I'm trying to understand, you're still very young, you're still in your 30s and you've achieved so much Thank on you. the continent. Where does that confidence come from, Natalie? Years and years of experiences. <laughs> you're still a baby. <laughs> Uh -huh. Years of experiences and I've allowed myself, I've given myself the opportunity obviously to learn from uh, past mistakes. Uh -huh. I've given myself the opportunity to experience, to go to other market, uh -huh. to see how people behave, to take on big projects and be challenged by them and to learn, you know, from those projects. For me, it was always about saying, be daring. It is all possible. Mm. It is all possible as long as you put your mind to it. Mm. That's all. Mm. Who would you say in your life has been the greatest person to influence your mindset? Well, I've learned from many people, mm -hmm. starting off from uh, my uh, extended family, mm -hmm. my family at home, mm -hmm. and strong leaders actually that have come from, from my country, uh, uh, Cameroon. Mm -hmm. But I've also learned from other global leaders. And here in South Africa, I've engaged uh, on a one-on-one -on -one level with um, individuals who went through what I always say, the unbelievable. And you look at them and you say, wow, they are still alive. How did they make it happen? Mm. Yes. Mm. So it's about learning from those different individuals and mm. taking the best out of those uh, learning experiences. I'm interested to know what kind of a man marries such a <laughs> driven <laughs> and determined woman. What is your husband like? <laughs> he is a beautiful man, uh -huh. simple, easygoing. Sometimes I tell him that he's too German, although he's a Cameroonian. Okay. Yes, he's had a very strong German influence because he lived in Germany for so long. He can speak French, English, and German. Can okay. you believe it? Yeah. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so at home, let's, who does all the cooking? You're such a busy woman. Do you have time to prepare meals for your family? You won't believe it. Okay. It's a pound. Uh -huh. You've been to my place, I think. No, I haven't. You haven't, okay. I'm a very good cook. Okay. A very good cook. All the West African food, Italian food, very, very good cook. I find the time, but I don't cook every day. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. I cannot mm -hmm. do that. I'm fortunate enough that I have helpers at mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. to obviously uh, make sure that uh, there's food, to make sure that the house runs smoothly. Natalie, how do you have fun? <laughs> Talking to you, <laughs> <laughs> meeting other people, mm -hmm. but most importantly, I like your focus earlier on intra-Africa trade, mm -hmm. but my fun and excitement has also come from learning, mm -hmm. learning from other women and learning from women entrepreneurs. Today, uh, I am uh, working with uh, WeConnect International. Mm -hmm. uh, my consulting firm was appointed to, to launch the program mm -hmm. in the South African market. It's only been like two months, but it's just so unbelievable to realize that women are not just go-getters. They make things happen. Mm -hmm. Let's give them more opportunities. Let's mm -hmm. allow those women that never had those opportunities in the past to be successful. I, I know some corporate will tell you, oh, well, we can find them. Oh, well, and even when they're given the opportunity to trade or to supply the goods, it's never at the level we would like them to be. Then let's work together. Mm -hmm. You understand that uh, the government has an important role to play when it comes to women entrepreneurship, but it cannot just be left. To the government. You're very passionate about your work. I wonder how do your children feel about that? How do your children feel about, you know, like you said, <laughs> mommy is married to education <laughs> first and, and your work? They are a part of it in a way. My, my, my kids are doing uh, very well at school. I have two beautiful girls, Casey mm -hmm. and Jamie. Mm -hmm. They're doing very well. And they actually the one coming to me, okay, so how many pages have you written so far when I was doing my PhD? Yes. 
So how many pages? Because I had like daily target. Okay, now I must write up like say five pages every day. So mommy, are you doing well? Are you having any challenges and so yeah. forth? They're checking on me. Yeah, yes. oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, they that's are great. adorable. They are beautiful children. Do you have time to actually play with them? Do you go to the extramural activities at school and things like that? I must admit that when I was overseas, yeah. uh, I live in, uh, in Canada, in the United States, my husband did m most of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, I'm getting back into that norm now. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. in, in, in like 30 seconds, what would you be your advice for, for women out there, particularly women who naturally will still want to do it all? They still want to have a family and still pursue their passions and interests. Mm -hmm. What would you be your advice for young women out there? African women? Well, there are many ways, obviously, to skin a cat. Okay. <laughs> but uh, again, my experience has taught me that there are three fundamentals mm -hmm. that we as women need to obviously uh, do or mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. The first one is capitalizing on your network. <laughs> okay. It is important, don't be ashamed of them really capitalize on your network and again yes it's about who you know but for me it goes beyond just dropping names mm -hmm. not be afraid to knock on the door and say oh by the way i need some help mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. you have to capitalize on that mm -hmm. you've got to be resilient mm -hmm. there are a lot of challenges uh, out there in the market you have to find a way for you to deal with those challenges last but not least is again about education it's about education. Build the skills that you need. Build the skills that are going to take you or enable you to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on, but I would like to focus on those on those three mm -hmm. because you cannot do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but through your network, obviously, you could call a friend and say, "Okay, you know what? I've got an assignment to work on." Will you mind doing X, Y, Z? For me, you can rely on your husband. I've had my sister also, mm -hmm. who has been extremely supportive. My sister, Karen, mm. has been there for me. So between Karen, my husband, my friend, I was able to do it. So I'm thankful to all of, mm. all of them. Mm. Dr. Natalie Chinjia, good luck with your nomination for the World Economic Forum uh, Young Global Leader. And thank you so much for chatting to us. I'm sure you've been a great inspiration to young women out there. Thank you, Tepan. Okay, that's how we're going to wrap today's edition of Up Close. You can catch us same time weekdays on SABC News, DSTV Channel 404. Catch some of our favorite episodes on the website youtube.com forward slash SABC News. And of course, for any suggestions, guests, my Twitter handle is at Tepi Mutekuwa. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>